expertise will include neural network, e-learning, ICT project management, multimedia content development, and he has recently done some work on big data analytics and AI, which regarding what his present lecture is going to be. The topic for today will be big data analytics and artificial intelligence. I welcome Dr. David to be on the stage. A round of applause for our students. Well, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing? Fine. Fine. Okay. Uh, my name is David Houston and uh, I work at like Taylor's you. University as the executive dean there. Right? And uh, I'm not sure how many of you okay, have been to Malaysia. Maybe some of you have. Right? But if you get an opportunity, please do visit okay, uh, Malaysia. Right? It's a beautiful country and you have, can, okay, can experience a lot of things. Now, uh, before I start my, uh, just to give you a background, uh, maybe I look like an Indian, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I am originally, my grandparents originally from India. All right, but okay, uh, me and my wife, uh, we are actually born in Malaysia. We studied there, etc. So we are actually Malaysian citizen of all the Malaysian passport. Okay. So, okay, uh, can I speak uh, some okay, uh, language? Uh, Hindi or that I can't, maybe a little bit of okay, uh, Tamil and a little bit of other languages. Uh, we do understand a little bit of Chinese, Mandarin, okay? and of course the major language that we talk is English and Malay language in that right? So, um, okay, I also have a quiz for the students. Okay, uh, I'm not sure you have internet access. If you have internet access, if you can download this. Hey, Kahoot, or go to this website called kahoot.it. Okay, so at the end you will have quiz and the winners will get some prize. Okay, the top three winners will get a prize for students. Okay, so uh, you by the you can download this on your mobile phone or you can directly go to this website. So later I will give you the pin number at the end of the presentation. There will be a quiz okay, you can participate if you want. Okay, do you have internet access? Mobile phone? Yes. yes. Okay, just, right, so you can, uh, it's just kahoot.it. Okay, let me uh, make, uh, give an overview of uh, Taylor's University. Uh. So Taylor's University is a private university just like City University. All right? We are the top private university in Malaysia. And we started 50 years ago as a small college. Today, we have a huge campus just like your campus here. All right? And we started in 2010. Okay, so we are just about 10 years old or 9 years old. This is our campus. Right? So in the middle here, there is a lake, a beautiful lake. Right? And it's surrounded by all these blocks, okay, buildings. So uh, in terms of the number of degree programs, we have a total of 84 degree programs. Okay, PhD, Masters, and of course mostly undergraduate. Covering from medical, social science, law, IT, engineering, everything, architecture, everything. So it covers 84 different programs. So it covers, uh, is, you can consider that as a comprehensive uh, university. Uh, student number, we have a total of about 10,000 students. Okay, and another 3,000 in the college. So total about 13,000 students in the, in the campus, in one campus. And we also have a uh, large number of the international students. Uh, out of the uh, 10,000, 2,000 students are you know, from okay, international students coming from 78 different countries. So if you come to the campus, it's like really international because you see meet different kinds of people from different countries. And the major ones are from Indonesia, right, China, Bangladesh, 
Pakistan, and also a few. Now we have quite a number from South Africa as well. We do have Indian students as well from India, but not very big numbers. Uh, staff, we have about 500 staffs, of which half of them are both a PhD. And one of the reasons for me to be here is we, I want to talk about student mobility. Right? Or sometimes we call it global mobility. What is global mobility is that today we want students to be a global citizen. Right? What do you mean by a global citizen? You should be able to work anywhere in the world, not just in India. Now, how do you understand the culture in Europe? How do you understand the culture in Malaysia? How do you understand the culture in China, for example? So it's important for students to spend at least one semester abroad. Okay, so that so you don't have to spend the whole, okay, whole degree there. So if you can spend one semester abroad, then you will get experience. Not only the experience, I think the more important one is networking. That is, you get a lot of contacts. In future, you can do business with your friends in China or friends in Malaysia. So the networking becomes a okay, uh, critical. So this is why we encourage both ways. Our students to come here so that they can network here and you to go to Malaysia or China rather, and so that you can also establish your network. Because, okay, uh, what is the, for example, in business, what is the key factor that allows you to do business? Yes, number one is context, right? That allows you to do business. So the more context you have internationally, the more business can you do. So we have about 185 partners coming from all over the world. Okay, so we are here, we hopefully we have discussed this, and we probably will be signing an MOU with the City University for student exchange. So when you come there, you don't have to pay fees for the uh, fees at the university there. You just have to take care of the living costs. All right? So similarly, our students come here, they don't have to pay fees, they just take care of the living costs. So that's the idea of uh, having this part in the universities. Our universities also rank uh, highly. Uh, in 2016, we are ranked okay, about 200, 250 under the QS ranking body. This is a uh, UK ranking body, and today we are 135 okay, in Asia. Right? So uh, I understand that your university is also ranked okay, so, so rank, okay, high. And for a specific subject that is hotel management and leisure management, we are number 21 in the world, not Asia in the world. Right? So that's the, the area of hospitality and leisure management. And under QS, we are a five star uh, university. And under one of the criteria called employer reputation, we are number four in the world. That puts us almost close to Harvard's and first graduates. That means uh, the industry prefers our graduates. Okay, now I go to the, uh, I, uh, briefly about the uh, university. Now I go specific to the, how technology is changing the world, right? And whether you like it or not, a lot of changes are coming. The so number one, okay, change that we're coming is uh, driverless vehicles, right? You have today cars, Mercedes cars, Audi cars that you can buy that you don't need a driver. The car can drive by itself. Have you heard of it? Yes, I'm sure. All right, and in Canada, in Europe, and even in Singapore, you can buy this car, and you can actually don't have to drive it. Okay, my friend sat in the car. Okay, he was so nervous. But after some time, he realized the car actually can go, no problem, no issue. Okay? And it's, okay, what happens when all these cars are auto, okay, we have a driverless okay, cars. Then, okay, taxi drivers will lose their jobs, auto drivers will lose their job, truck drivers will lose their job, pilots will lose their job, okay, shipping crew will lose their job. So the whole okay, logistic industry is going to change in the next 10 years. Right? You'll find that okay, the ships, right? You don't need shipping crews anymore. All right? The ship will sail by itself to the destination. All right? And similarly, uh, cars and vehicles will communicate with each other. So if there is an accident or if a car slows down in front, automatically all the other cars will slow down. Right? And in other words, the number of accidents also will go down. Okay? So that's coming. So are we ready for this? All right? So the next thing that is coming is drones. Right? Today, in UK and China, drones are used as policemen. Okay, so don't, you don't need a large police force. So drones go around detecting okay, even cars. Okay, and it can also uh, detect suspicious person. How does the okay, drone knows 
a suspicious a person. For example, if a person behaves suspiciously, walks here and there, okay, they use AI technique to identify this person is okay something wrong or something okay, fishy. So uh, that can be done. So drones are used for that purpose. Not only for that purpose, Amazon.com is going to deploy, send your goods through drones. In future, when you buy something from Amazon.com, you'll see a drone coming to your house. Right? And deliver it. And uh, also, uh, goods will be delivered. And also during disaster, when there is uh, okay, uh, a flood or okay, a fire, uh, drones are used to rescue people. Right? So that's basically how drones are used. Another thing that's Okay, coming huge is what we call Industry 4.0. So this is a buzzword. If you type in Google Industry 4.0, you'll find that okay, a lot of manufacturing is going to be fully automated. Okay, there will be robots working in okay, in the manufacturing. In the car industry, those days you see many people working. Today, the whole car industry process manufacturing is automated. Now this looks scary, right? So what jobs will there be for us? If computers are start taking over all these jobs, robots. Okay, so there are a lot of okay, robots being okay, uh, uh, developed, and these robots are all intelligent robots. They are not just okay, a toy robot; they are intelligent robots. They can carry out tasks. They can do certain work. Okay, uh, for example, this one can diffuse a bomb. Okay, if there's a bomb, this robot can actually go and diffuse the uh, bomb. And in manufacturing, these robots can do manufacturing. Okay, so this is another area. So what I'm trying to say uh, here is that: Are you ready for this change? Can you build robots? Can you build drones? Can you build artificial intelligence okay, systems? Okay, this is the future, right? Not just programmers. Okay, we don't need okay programmers. Soon there will be spec robots will be writing programs for you. That's already started. Right? So in other words, if you are just looking for a job as a programmer, as an engineer, no more jobs for that. You must go into the higher end, okay, where artificial intelligence and so on. So this is where we are trying to, uh, I'm just here to share with you, so how, how the world is changing and the change is coming very fast. As you can see that taxi drivers are all affected, right, in, in India also. Now with Uber, all right, they are all gone. Almost. Okay, another five years, you won't see taxi drivers around. So that's basically what's happening. So what's there? Jobs will be available for future graduates. Okay. So these jobs they may not exist the next within the next 20 years. There is telemarketing, accountants, uh, retail sales, okay, technical write writers. Okay, I'm here saying technical writers also gone. Real estate agent gone. Okay, typists, okay, machinists. All these people with no more jobs. Take for example accountant. Right. So many people think, oh, accountant job is going to go. Well, I was invited, okay, by MIA, the English Institute of Accountants, for a meeting with them. You know what the accountant, accounting body said? Okay, we may lose our jobs. We need to look at what the future accountant should be doing, right? Because the current accountants, what they do? They prepare accounts, right? The P and L, the profit and loss account. They prepare, they interpret the accounts. They prepare all the necessary accounts. But today, computer can do that, and computer is doing that at real time, 24 hours, right? So you don't need people to do that. So what is the job of accountants? So today, the accountants are studying AR, artificial intelligence, and big data, right? So they want to conduct training to retrain all the accountants to understand big data and AR. So accounting job is changing. Do you think the medical field is changing? Yes. Right? Definitely. Today, a lot of the diagnostics is done by machine. Yeah. When you go for a blood test, it's not the doctor who does it. The doctor just takes your blood. The rest is done by computers. Right? Yeah, my sin expert system also. That's right. You can even carry out, the robots can even carry out operation on a patient. Right? We have gone to that level. Okay? So that's the. So, do you think a, a computer can write an article? Can you wait for more people coming. Good. Okay. Do you think uh, a computer, a AI machine, okay, can write an article, an essay? Yes, sir. It is already there. Okay. So next time, if you want to write an essay, ask the AI to write an essay for you. All right. The software can actually write an essay. In, uh, in the future, journalists. 
Okay, all the newspaper reports will be written by machines, not by you. Okay, so that's how it's going. And look at this uh, chart, okay, which is this is the US. The, the, the dark line, the black line shows productivity. The lower line shows employability. Right? So productivity versus employment. Productivity is going up. The employment is going down slowly. So what does that mean? Okay, the productivity goes up, but the number of people employed, employed becomes less. So what does that mean? Automation, right? Yeah? So things are made, or computers are taking over, and they are more efficient, so the productivity goes up. Whereas people are less and less people employed. And this is 2013, the gap is already big. And by now, 2017, the gap is even bigger. And that's the okay, future is going to be even bigger as well. And this is the job that will be taken over until 2076. Huh? Okay, for example, you play Angry Birds or chess game. Can you beat computers? It's impossible now to beat, beat computers, right? The computers are more powerful. Poker game, you cannot beat computers, right? Do you believe that today a machine can wash your clothes, iron your clothes, and fold your clothes? It's already available. Okay. When you talk, the system can automatically type. Yes. Google does that for you, right? Uh, Google uh, or WhatsApp. You just press the hit the mic and you talk the types for you. Okay. But I do not know whether okay uh, there is a translator for in for Hindi. Is there one? Yes. Can talk any types. Okay. So that's another area to explore. Okay, to work, work on uh, reading a textbook, writing an essay. Okay. It's already there, but by 2026, you'll find a, a good essay can be written by the computers. Truck drivers will be gone, okay? Uh, the computers can drive the truck. And in future, songs can be written by computers. So you don't read, uh, you don't require people to write songs, right? And you can write songs according to your taste, according to individual taste. So that will happen in the uh, 20s, right? And then, of course, translation is there. And by 2040s, all newspapers will be written by, okay, and, uh, okay, and books, story books, and all that will be written by computer, uh, computers. Not you. And finally, we have performed surgery. And by 2066, okay, computers probably can carry out all human tasks. Whatever human can do, the computer can do. By 2066, maybe some of us may be wrong. But that's the future, and that's how it's going to be. Cooking. Today, there are robots who can cook and can prepare special dishes for you. Okay? According to your taste, again, you want spicy, you want sweet, what do you want? And so, every okay, individual can have a different taste. And this is a, okay, another one that they can make. Uh, this, there was one. Um, uh, a uh, robot that was created by the India that can make corset. Okay, so you can make uh, onion corset or ghee corset, whatever corset you want. All right, it's automated. So uh, that's the thing. So in other words, a lot of jobs are kind of slowly being taken over. So what should okay, we as students, okay, as uh, lecturers, what should we do? We should be learning all these new techniques of big data and AI to build such machines, to build auto autonomous vehicles. To build okay, artificial intelligence okay, processes in banking, in okay, medical, and so on. So this is what is required in the future, not just a programmer. Programming, basic programming can be done by computers, but you need an artificial intelligence level of programming, more intelligent programming. So that's what is required. So another one that you require is robots. Can you develop robots? Okay, and program the robots to do a task, to do a job. So that's what is required. So they say that by 2022, there will be 23 percent of humanoid robots that is like behave like humans. There will be stationary robot for manufacturing, which is 37. There is aerial and underwater robots, which is 19 percent. There is like okay, drones and so, so on. And non-humanoid land robots, this okay, non-human robots, which is about 33 percent. So this is how the robots are going to be deployed over the next few years. And again, there are a lot of okay. Uh, business models that, okay, that looks at beyond 18, 2018. And here is a 
uh, if an interesting graph, the, the dark color shows the current impact. The light color shows the future impact. Look at mobile computing and cloud technology. Today, it is a huge impact. But the future, there's less jobs on that. Why? Cloud computing all this already been automated. So the future, there's not much okay, jobs available. Uh, big data, today is still, okay, there's still some progress. Look at artificial intelligence. The white is bigger, much bigger. So which means that a lot more people are needed in this. Robotic is another area, 3D printing is another area, and biotechnology is another area. Okay, so these are the fields that we're going to expand very fast over the next few years. And LinkedIn, for example, uh, they said what jobs will be in the top 20 jobs today? Number one, machine learning engineer. So how many of you are here a machine learning engineer or AI engineer? That's the first number one job required. If you are a data scientist, the second one is data scientist, or a machine learning expert, immediately you get a job anywhere in the world. That's how high the demand is. And the salary for that is huge. Okay? So a lot of people are going into this area. And the use of uh, technology becomes great. For example, there will be a lot of wearable technology. We say wearable technology. That is, your, nowadays you have a smartwatch, right? And what can the smartwatch do? Measure your heart rate. Can measure your temperature. Can measure your how many steps you have taken. Uh, in a way, it looks at the health. So, a lot of things are measured. And what happens when you collect all this data? You have a pattern of how you behave in terms of exercising, in terms of your heart rate, and so on. Now, if you go to a doctor and tell the doctor that I'm sick, the doctor will take your pressure and try to give you a message. The doctor measure you any at only one, one point at that point of time. But if the doctor has the information for the last six months, the last five years, the doctor can make a better decision. Right? You say your pressure has been slowly increasing for the last uh, six months. So there's something that you need to look at. Uh, so rather than just at one point. So this is where technology will become, wearable technology. And uh, recently in uh, India, one uh, a girl invented a uh, earring that is also a, a headphone. So you can talk and uh, also listen. Right? So you see that instead of using a headphone, you know, so you have a earring that you can communicate with through your phone, through Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So that's basically it. Okay? This is the kind of innovation required. Can you invent something simple? Right? Uh, in the future, the specs, for example, you wear the specs, and I look at you, your name comes up. I know who you are. All right? So that, okay, again, is image processing. So can you, okay, for example, take a photo of this class, and everybody's name sums up. Can you do a process? You can you write a program for that? Okay, so that's okay. Uh, what all right? Uh, all this use of technology, of course, mobile technology is coming, as I mentioned. And as I mentioned, it's a global workforce. You must be able to work anywhere in the world, not just in India. So your communication skills, your leadership skills, your interaction with other people should be different, right? You must be good in language, especially in English, because when you want to work in a different country. So uh, you are need to prepare for that. And the other thing, key thing is that creativity and innovation becomes the key. As I mentioned, can you invent things? Can you okay, redo, okay, uh, uh, think, we call it, think out of the box. Can you do it differently, right? So that is the kind of people we need in the future. And of course, it's a borderless service, right? So it's a global okay, uh, uh, service. And the lot of technology uh, is already disrupted, right? Um, we have talked about Uber, taxi drivers, how the, the technology has disrupted them. Banks. In the future, banks will also be in trouble. Why? Now, what we can do is that individuals can give bank loans to their friends or etc. So they have a, we call it bank simple. Right? In internet, through the internet, if you want a loan, you can apply and they will give you a loan. These are individuals, not a bank. Eh? Right? And of course, they have their system up, okay? How to collect the money back and so on. Right? So if this comes in, what will happen to the banks? Well, most of the banks will collapse, right? Right? Today banks exist is because of the government regulatories, because of the central bank controls everything. Now, when digital currency comes in, 
right? When digital currency comes in, what do you think will happen to the bank? Now, if I have a digital currency, I can buy direct from US. Okay, if you work for a company in US, okay, for example, a developer software extending to them, they pay directly to your digital account, digital currency. They do not go through the central bank. They do not go through any bank. Right, so it's paid directly, and you can spend on the internet to buy things and so on. Okay, so that's digital currency. So when that happens, what do you think will happen? The central bank will collapse, right? Because now people don't go through the central bank. Okay, you can direct money. What happens when central bank collapse? Just like you know, what happens? The central bank collapse. Countries collapse. There was no more country because it's due to the central bank. The central bank manages everything. Tax you, take the money, pay, uh, develop the country, and so on. The moment there's no central bank and all the transactions are direct from a person to person, not going to a third party, that's the end of countries. There's no more, you cannot have India, Malaysia, all that you can call. You can, you can still have probably physically, but there is no system. Unless in okay, the future they come up with a different system. So you find that the whole world may become one, may collapse and okay, give way. Right? I do not know whether it will happen because the countries are very strong to protect their borders. The central bank will say no, e uh, no digital currency. We want to stick to the whole. Actually, digital currency is already available, but countries refuse to implement it. Right? So that's one reason. The second reason, if you have uh, digital currency, there's no corruption. Do you realize that? There's no once you have digital currency, there's no corruption. Why? Because the digital currency actually trace where the money goes. You can see exactly from who to transfer to who, except all the time. Cash is not, cash cannot be tracked. That's why people prefer cash. That's why people keep cash in the house. Corruption money is cash usually. Alright, so think about it, all this, when digital currency comes in. Alright, so of course today travel, shopping, all that have been done, okay, online. So I'm going to share with you the 10 technology trends, okay, uh, for 2019 and beyond. The number one trend, is autonomous of things, right? So all the time we need to think of how to automate things, just like a driverless car, a driverless uh, plane, okay, a driverless okay, uh, uh, processing, okay, in the manufacturing, right? So these are the kind of things that we need to develop. So there will be more robots, vehicles, drones, appliances, and agents that is going to be okay, autonomous. So that's the first trend. The second trend. Augmented analytics. We have a lot of data generated from, for example, okay, uh, from uh, WhatsApp, from Facebook, from uh, YouTube. All these are data generated. And a lot of these data are unstructured data. Okay? Structured is where you can store it in the table form in a, in, a, in a database. Unstructured is like videos, okay, uh, text. So, how do we analyze this unstructured data and come up with meaningful outputs? Okay. I'll give you an example. Today, uh, every month, I get a statement from my bank, okay, a statement, which tells me how I have spent my money. It will tell me 20% you spend on food, 30% you spend on transport, 40% you spend on so and so. How do they know that how I spend? And that's all comes under big data and AI. Okay, so use they analyze how did they know? Because number one, I may use my credit card. Okay, I may use my okay uh, ATM machines, etc. So when you use all this, they are actually analyzing and giving you a report. And in future, they may be able to advise me. The AI system may advise me. Okay, I said okay. In future, I want to save twenty percent. The system will say, okay, you should only spend so much on this, so much on this. So you try to advise it. So that's the kind of automation that people are looking at. So it's called augmented analytics. So by 2020, okay, some of this data scientist job is also going to be taken over by computers. Right? So analytics is huge area. Okay, data analytics is huge area, or data science is huge. Even there, we need automation process. The third one, you'll see more AI-driven applications. So when you develop software, your software must be AI-enabled. Okay, it has got AI features. What do you mean by AI features? It has got intelligence built into your software, not just a procedure. 
Right? So can you build software that are intelligent? So that's the challenge. Right? The third, fourth one is digital tree. I'm not sure you've heard of digital tree. Have you heard of digital tree? Okay, you have a physical plane and you have a digital copy of it. This means that okay, you replicate the place in a digital format. So when the plane is flying, I can see all the engine parts, components working in the digital okay, digital copy. So if there is something wrong in the digital case, okay, it will okay, is okay, heated up or some okay, area that is okay, some faulty, the digital plane will immediately trigger a signal. Then you can quickly the physical plane can take actions. Right? Anyway, that's not new. If you buy uh, the new cars like Mercedes, Audi, BMW, on the dashboard you see a digital okay tree, right? It shows how the engine is working. It shows how the battery is uh, okay operating. It shows how the speed of the wheels. Everything is there, right? So let's take a digital copy of things. Now imagine if there is a Digital copy of human. What will happen? Yeah, a digital copy of yourself. All right, and that's going to happen. People are trying to build digital copy of humans as well. This means that let's say one day when you die, your children can still communicate with you through the digital copy. Yeah. They can still ask questions and the digital copy can answer as if okay, it's the okay, you answer it. Okay? And the digital copy can continue to learn because it's got AR features. And continue to be with the family and grow. Right? So that is coming. Maybe not in our age, maybe in another 20, 30 years. Okay, you're gonna have. So in other words, people will never die. Of course, physically you die, but digitally you live forever. Okay, and you grow also. I mean, then you start communicating and so on. So that's a digital twin of things that you can do. So can you build digital twin of simple, simple things? Can you build a digital twin of the fan? Can you build a digital twin of the light? Right. So you, the light will monitor the energy, okay, how long it videos, how often it switched on, and so on. So these are digital copies. And of course, the fifth one is empowered age. That means from cloud computing, it will move back to uh, what you call age computing or device level computing. Right? That means okay, there will be more because computers, I mean, the handphones, okay, devices are becoming more powerful. So a lot of the computing power will transfer to the devices rather than the cloud. So that's the trend. Uh, okay, number five, six. Of course, uh, you all probably know the immersive technology will be here. And what do you mean by immersive? It's basically AR, MR, and VR. Usually we call AR and VR. Okay, so augmented reality and virtual reality. So uh, today we can build, okay, uh, for example, architect. They don't build models. They build a virtual, okay, a virtual, uh, AR, using AR and VR to build a virtual building. So that the, the customers or the client can actually walk through the virtual environment and see how the building looks like. Okay, so that's becoming popular. Uh, so how many of you are familiar with AR, VR? How many of you want to do a project in AR, VR? It's also important because that's the next field that's still coming up. Right. Seven, blockchain. Have you heard of blockchain? Yeah. Yes, most of you have heard of blockchain. Blockchain is more okay, a platform okay, where it's more secure. Okay, where a database is a data are stored in distributed okay, uh, area, not in a single node, in a distributed node. So if you delete the data in one node, the data cannot be deleted, the data will be replicated back. Okay, will copy back. So you actually cannot delete. So in other words, uh, blockchain becomes very secure. Right? When it's secure, that's when okay, you can have more applications working on that environment. So the thing is that the question is, how many of you can develop a simple application on a black blo blockchain <laughs> platform? There are many blockchain platforms, open, okay, uh, open source blockchain platform on the internet. Go and try to develop your application rather than developing it Microsoft.net, Java, and all that. Try to develop it in blockchain platform. And smart spaces are becoming key, right? So uh, you find, for example, okay, today in this classroom, if it is a smart space, you can actually automatically know how many people are sitting in this hall. 
you can control the fans and the lights from your handphone. All right? For example, I actually can control. Can I control phone? Phone? Uh, I'll show you. I can control from here the. From here, I can control the lights in my house. Okay, uh, just a quick one. So this is the apps. All right, so it's loading. Okay, and once it's loaded, you see these lights. Okay, it shows on and off, right? So I can click on and off the light in my house will go off now from here. Okay, and if I click on this, it will show you. Okay, the light is blue color now. I can change the color to whatever color I want. Right now in the house. So my sorry, my kids say, hey, suddenly school changed the color of the lights of the house. All right. So from here I can change to let's say now a green color. So now immediately there in my house it will be green. So can you build such application to control lights? Very simple applications. Can you build a light that can connect to your Wi-Fi and then can control from here, from anywhere in the world? Yes, yeah. So that's basically the challenge. So if you develop this kind of application, it is it will sell the river. Okay, so, okay, in the market. So this is the type of okay, a simple smart. So eventually the whole city becomes smart. Okay, you are parking, you know where, okay, for example, when you drive, you know where to park because the parking is reserved for you. Okay, when you apply for it. So all the things are fully automated in the city. And this is not something beyond. Uh, many European countries already started developing smart cities. Okay. And of course, uh, digital ethics and privacy. Okay. Of course, there should be uh, uh, laws introduced, personal information protection, digital asset protection. The government needs to introduce all this to ensure that okay, whatever we do in the digital world okay, is ethical, it's a secure, okay, it's protected. And the last but not least, okay, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about quantum computing. Right? Yes, well, good. Some of you have heard about quantum computing. Right? The quantum computing is the future computing. Today we use electronics to do computing. The future is more quantum, you learn quantum physics. Now quantum is maybe hundred to thousand times faster than electronics. Right? So it's an example if I if you, if you go to the library, a big library, you can read only one book at a time, right? If you apply quantum okay, computing, you can read all the book at one go. Right? So that's how fast it is. So countries like China, US, and Singapore are trying to fight for this technology. They are quickly developing. So whether India has the capacity, okay, India is doing something on this also. Okay, I know that the, the, the top three researchers are working on quantum computing as well in India. So who is going to build the first quantum computing? Will control the world. Right. Okay, so that's uh, a quick trend of what's coming. And of course, uh, the other thing that's coming is AI and machine learning, as I mentioned. Okay, so this will be the key area. So uh, I, I, I think most of you know what's AI, so I will not go to the definition. And but there is a huge eight thirty billion dollar okay, development AI okay, is coming, right? Think, uh, it is okay. So a lot of work is being done. So there are a lot of products are being okay, developed with AI. Especially in US and China. So, um, where is AI used at the moment? AI is used in data analytics, okay, personalization, optimization, and testing, email marketing, and so on. So, already AI is used in many areas today. And AI will work together with big data because you take all the data you need to analyze, you need to apply intelligence. So, so that's where the, these two will become very strong. So today, businesses are done run by data, okay? And big data and AI is going to transform the world, as I mentioned before. So if you look at a uh, Foster study, okay, they said that okay, 65 percent of the respondents okay, feel that they uh, want to de deploy, uh, deploy big data automation, right? So 65 percent want to use automation of big data, and 51 percent are really working on machine learning. Okay, 54 percent are look, looking at predictive and predictive analytics. That means they can predict what's next. Okay, etc. So that's working on that kind of okay, environment. And 60 percent, okay, uh, in, are really invested in IT infrastructure for AI. And 53 percent, okay, developing knowledge within the business. 
the AI knowledge. So, for example, uh, in Malaysia, all the banks, okay, yeah, okay, the major banks, they are training all the employees. They have about 30 to 40,000 employees. They are training all the employees in AI, okay, technology, and machine learning. Why? Because they know in future, nobody okay, is going to go to the bank. It's all done online, okay, transactions and everything. So, they're going to use uh, AI techniques to, okay, uh, to advise customers in future and so on. So they really need people. So it's today, okay, for example, they are building, uh, you know, when you go to the bank, you talk to someone, right? Now you can talk to the, uh, uh, to a computer, actually. And the computer can respond exactly like a human, right? So that's okay, what the banks are doing now. So AI will become a political concern. Why? The politics, politicians will get involved in AI, right? Because a lot of people are going to lose jobs. Okay? So it becomes a political concern. But are you going to stop AI? This becomes worse, right? Because the other, other countries will move very much ahead. Okay. So the only way is what? To train people in AI more, more people to be trained in AI. So in Malaysia, for example, uh, the government is advising all the universities, okay, what are the degree programs that you should start? like data science, they are, they are asking for all the universities to start, right? And they give support, okay, how to start, etc. So they give, okay, uh, subsidies if you start these programs and so on. So the government must make initiative to transport the country, otherwise, before it's too late. Because just like the taxi drivers and all that, it just hits them suddenly, right? Overnight, all the business are gone. So if India or even Malaysia, if they are not careful, Suddenly, that will hit, and many of the industry will close down. So you need to prepare for this. So uh, the politicians, the government need to do something about it. Number two, the entire logistic world will change, as I mentioned. All right. Uh, here's an example, which is uh, in uh, Amazon. The Amazon, okay, there's no people in this warehouse. That is a robot. That is a driverless lorry. The lorry goes in. To the warehouse, and this robot will load all the things into the lorry. Okay, once loaded, this lorry goes to the next warehouse, and okay, again there, machines unload. And here it will record in the computer will record these are the things that transfer to this warehouse. The other warehouse say we have received these goods, all done by computers, no humans involved. So that's the future logistic world. Number two, in all the manufacturing will be automated. Okay, things like self-driving cars will be launched. So cars will drive by itself. Even in a junction like this, you don't need traffic lights to control. Cars from here will go at 100 kilometers per hour. Cars will go this way 100 kilometers per hour without accidents. They just bypass because it's all controlled by computers. Okay, at a high accuracy. In robots will be used in war. Future. In fact, already now, a lot of the uh, warplanes, US warplanes, are okay, without pilots. Okay? And uh, in future, more soldiers will be this. Okay, this will be the soldiers to fight. And I, I'm sure you have seen a lot of uh, movies and all that okay, using this kind of uh, uh, robots. So that is also being doing, but not only on a war, also in disaster okay, uh, events. Okay? If there's a flood, there's a fire, all this they will be used. Okay, machine learning will become key, as I mentioned, and that will help the knowledge workers. So in a manufacturing environment, a lot of machine learning tools will assist this person. Right? So again, AI technology okay, has the ability to aid or help out workers. Right? So can you build a game software that okay, help workers? So that will become key. And content creation by AI. As I mentioned, today you can write songs can be written by AI machines. Articles can be written by AI machines, etc. So um, if you go to this okay, okay, associate press, okay, this wordsmith and so on, they can actually generate okay, a text, a report, based on the data that you provide. Okay? So what's going to happen? Right? All these things are okay, going to be automated. Right? So this is where Okay, many people thought content cannot be created by machines. But today, okay, it's okay, proven that okay, 
uh, robots or AI can actually create content. Okay? Even artists, drawings are done by robots today. So whether in the future, okay, artists can draw better or robot can draw better, you do not know. Of course, the expert uh, artists will still be there. But what I'm talking about here, the, the middle level, all will be taken over by robots. Peer-to-peer -peer networking creates more transparency. As I mentioned, like blockchain, uh, today all the computers are connected. So that is very difficult to cheat because they all are linked, like just like blockchain. So there will be greater transparency okay, in a country, okay, in organizations. And customers will become familiar talking to robots, talking to machines in the future. So in the future, you will be communicating with with machines, all right? Uh, even your handphone in future, you just talk and that will carry on. With a car, for example, in Malaysia today, you can buy a car, you sit in the car and say, open the windows, you open the windows, all right? You say, on, switch on the aircon, you don't switch on the aircon. All voice activated. So in other words, in future, you will see more and more voice activated kinds of okay, devices coming. So that's the next uh, number eight trend. And of course, there will be a great demand for data scientists right, or data engineers. So these are the statistics. If you go to the website, you can find plenty of data uh, statistics that shows there's a huge demand for data scientists. So how many of you okay, uh, want to do a course on data science? Normally we call the course program in data science. So the universities have started, in Malaysia, most universities have started offering data science as a course. And I understand that City University is also going to start a data science course. Okay. And AI will also be used in medical okay, to fight diseases. Right? So as I mentioned, can you imagine a robot operating on you? Would you go to the hospital where they said only robots are there, no doctors? Would you go to the hospital? How many of you pray to go to the hospital? No one. You prefer to see humans. Well, Okay, I, okay, it is my perception, I don't know about you. I think if there is a robot, of course the robot has to be tested, verified. The robots can work up to one millionth of an inch. Human, what is the accuracy level of human? Yeah. A lot of operations go wrong. If, if a human, they accidentally put the scissors inside and stitch it back. Right? <laughs> Right. So a lot of things happen, right? Uh, so robots may be okay, more uh, better than humans in, in the area of certain areas, right? And if you ask me, for example, uh, they also have built uh, uh, AI-based doctors uh, that means can give advice. Now, who can give a better advice? Is it the doctor or the, uh, uh, for example, robot? Now, if you go to a clinic, okay, let's say any clinic that okay, uh, you see a doctor. Okay, the doctor has been there for 10 to 20 years. How much has he learned about cancer? How much has he learned about the new flu? The moment you go, he will just check you and give you the standard medicine that he has given everybody. Right? Whereas, when you go to computers, it has a data record of you for the past 10 years. Your pressure. How often do you get flu? All the records are okay, being analyzed. Okay? So based on that, it can give you a more accurate diagnostic and also a more accurate answer that's suitable for you, not a common. So because a lot of doctors just give you common medicine for everybody, but each individual is different. So that's the level of okay, uh, doctors in the future, right? And many people believe the computer will be more accurate than you just the doctor, right? So whether it's true, we'll wait to see. Okay, and uh, the last part, there are many AI technology. Uh, this is where you can learn. What, what should you learn in AI? If you ask you the next question. What should you learn in AI? These are the top 10 topics that you can learn in AI. Number one, I'll go here. Natural language generation. Can you produce text in digital from based on the digital data? If I give you some data, can you write a simple okay, article? Let me give you some uh, a simple example. Maybe you can do it in Hindi. You give an article to a computer, any article. Can the can your software classify whether this text is talking about politics, whether it's talking about sports, 
or whether it's talking about medical. Right? Classification is number one. When you give it a text, can you classify what's the topic? Number two, if it is sports, okay, are you talking about cricket? Are you talking about football? Are you talking about hockey? Right? So if you can do this, that means you are trying to learn, understand the article. As simple as that. So it's all about classification. So can you write a software, take an article in Hindi, try to identify the classifications? If you can do that, that's already a big achievement. So that could be a final year project. With the help of bag of words, we are we can do so. Yeah. Yeah, but also yeah, we need to analyze the text okay. and tell what is it. Because when we read the article in the newspaper, we quickly understand okay, this is the cricket game we are talking about, and which are the teams playing. Technically, I'm talking about. Yeah. That's right. So that's uh that's the first number one thing that is required. Okay. What we one technology for AI technology required, and there are some examples here. People have done. The next one is speech recognition. When somebody talks, okay, can you change it to the computer format, that is text format or digital format? Okay, there are really a lot of software that can recognize words, but I'm not sure. Are there software to recognize Hindi? When I talk in Hindi, it types the text. Yes, there is, right? So Google has done it. Okay, so again, whether we can do such okay, text, speech recognition text. Okay, so that's how the engine works. So when somebody talks, it analyzes and converts to text. Can you build virtual agents? These are virtual agents. Where people can talk to this agent on a computer or on a device. And the device can answer back. So for example, if you ask, what's your name? They one can answer. How old are you? You think can answer. So can you do simple things like this first? But of course, at the same time, this agent must be able to learn. For example, when you ask, that the, the agent must ask, who are you? I say, I'm David. Then the computer will learn about me. So next time you see me, you say, hello, David. That's intelligence, building it. So machines that can learn about. So because it can recognize your face with the camera. Okay. So it asks you, who are you? And what job are you doing? So the computer records and keeps all this information. So it slowly learns, just like a child learns. So this is another thing that we uh, require, the knowledge required. This is the technology required. Machine learning is another big area. Right? Uh, so there are plenty of software for machine learning. Right? If you can get a certificate in machine learning, there are plenty of certificates, like from a from a mood, okay, model, I'm sorry, book, the like Coursera. If you go to Coursera, you can get a certification from okay, various universities. Okay, so you take a course for one or two weeks, and you can get a certificate. So there are many, many platforms to learn about many things to learn about machine learning. Okay? There are many APIs. There are many tools. So are you familiar with these tools? Are you familiar with these APIs? Uh, Google platform. If you go, there are plenty of APIs available for you to experiment, and it's free. So you can go and learn all these things. So can you tell me about fractal analysis that you have used in the previous slide? Fractal analysis. What one? is that? Previous? Previous. Next. Next. Uh, fractal analysis. Okay. Fractal analysis, it is our example's name of the software that's using machine learning. It is the name of the product. Yeah. They name, okay, for example, H2O is a software. SARS is a software. Factor analysis is another software, the name given to So you can actually key in on Google and search for this. They will give you more information how they are using machine learning in this example. And today, a lot of okay, uh, hardware will be optimized by AI. Uh, some of you have this phone, right? The, when the memory is full, what does it say? It will ask you whether you like to optimize your and for right, you press one button, it will go and delete all those unwanted files, go and pay, uh, uh, free up some memory for you, etc. And et so, this is what we call AI optimized hardware. So, the user do not have to do anything, the system takes care of the hardware components. So, can you build such? But this is more for those who are developing hardware. And we also need more decision management. Okay, can you develop? Systems that can make decisions. 
I'll give you an example. In a banking environment, no? if you take a bank, what do you do? Okay, let's say somebody applies for a loan. Who decides whether you should give a loan or not to give a loan? Who should decide? Anyone? Who should decide? Now management decide, right? So can you develop an application that you don't need managers to decide? How? Based on the data or the spending pattern of the customer. Right? So if you have all this data, you collect all this data, then you can actually okay, develop an algorithm that automatically decides. So this is what we call decision management, okay? Software that can make decisions. When you have an autonomous vehicle, should you turn right or should you turn left? That's a decision to be made. When there's an obstacle in front, the car must stop. That's a decision to be made. So can you make simple decisions? Okay, give us software for that purpose. Okay, that's another big area. Right? And of course, after machine learning is deep learning. Right? This is more advanced okay, than okay, machine learning. People are going into deep learning, and there are many, many different examples uh, that you can learn, networks, fluid AI, etc. So there are all these are platforms for deep learning. Go and learn one of these platforms. Okay, how to use these tools for deep learning. And that's another area where a lot of demand. And very few people actually today who knows about deep learning. Now, if you become an expert in this area, definitely you can get a job again in any part of the world. Biometrics is not new. Again, there will be a lot of okay, people, experts needed still in this area. Okay, uh, that's okay, using okay, because we want to interact between human and machine, not only by images, touch, speech, body language, and so on. So again, a lot of applications are required in, okay, in biometrics. These are some examples. And of course, robot, robotic process automation. These are not robots. These are software. Okay, normally software. Okay, robotic processor. This is a software that it, it, uh, does automation in a manufacturing or in an office environment. So again, we need to develop okay, tools okay, or software for this. And of course, last but not least, is the text analysis and natural language processing. Given a text, can you analyze it? Okay? And then convert it to okay, a speech or some report or whatever. Okay? So I'm trying, this is basically trying to understand a sentence meaning and settings. Okay. So can you build computers that try to understand the text, as I mentioned? If we give an article, are you talking about cricket? Are you, okay, are you talking about sports? Are you talking about medical? Are you talking about politics? If sports, is it cricket? If cricket, which team are playing? Which is the better team? All these are basically text analysis. In, For example, in Facebook, okay, or in Instagram, if I'm, uh, let's say, uh, uh, if, let's say about City University, do most students talk positive about city university or talk negative about city university? You can do an analysis. Sentimental analysis, government with this. Huh? Yeah, yes. under this as well. Yes. Sentimental analysis. Yes. You can go deeper into that. That's okay, looking at um, the meaning. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, etc. So that's okay. Previews. Yeah, this is just a positive, negative uh, uh, result. This is more uh, a report like, you know, what are people actually saying? So, of course, natural language processing as well. Okay, so that's the conclusion. As I said, 30% of the jobs will be obsolete by the next 20 years. So, are we ready for it? Okay, don't be part of the people who lose the job, be the part of people who create new jobs. Right? So, you should be people who create. So, I tell uh, all my students don't, after graduation, don't look for a job. Don't look for a job. Go and create jobs. How to create job? You start a business and employ people. You are creating jobs for others. Right? Graduates should not be looking for a job. You should be a creator of jobs. Okay? That's how a country can move. If everybody looks for jobs, nobody is going to create jobs. Right? All these technology are job creators. What I'm trying to tell you is all are job creators. It, okay, you should be uh, leading the creating more. So you create. Uh, let's say you come up with an idea, employ three or four people. You can start very small. Right? Uh, most of my former students, right, I encourage them to say not to work, go and start a business. Even currently, one of my PhD students, I say start a business and do your PhD as well. Right? So it's doing both. Right? So this is important okay, if you want to. Now, in the early stages, when you are just graduated, 
for the first three to five years. If you fail the business, it's okay. You have nothing to lose because you have no commitment. You are not married, you don't have children, okay, you don't have to worry. Right? And it's a good learning curve for you. Okay? Of course, when you are married and you have kids, then you realize that you cannot take risks. You want to uh, put a job in a government because it's very safe. Don't look for a job in a government. Okay. There's a lot of job, a right to look for. Because when you work for a government, you're very satisfied. You never want to improve yourself. You know the government will keep you. Yes, you are okay, always there. Your job, you'll never lose a job. You may become very, very complacent. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Whereas in the private things are moving so fast. If you are good, you are always you have a job. Don't worry. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say here. With that, I'm done. Okay. Uh, there is a quiz. Hold on. Okay, I'll do the quiz part of it. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Yeah. Now, there is a little surprise for you. Sir, sir will ask the quiz, and whosoever will give the answer of the questions correctly, he or she will be given a gift from <laughs> directly from Malaysia. <laughs> Okay, so please be patient. Aram se baithe. Okay, uh, we are ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, okay, if you download it or go to kahoot.it, okay, you can download this software or and then you type this pin number to join the quiz. Okay, so I'll wait for you to key in this pin number to join the quiz. It's a Kahoot. Okay, we have three players. Right, many Rohit, Ash, Ravi, Neha. Okay. 19 players. Arvind. 
So, after Ash is the top, 873 points. Okay, hold on, we're not finished yet. <laughs> we have five questions. Yeah. Okay, so it's a pass to be given how fast you go. But the faster you are, more fast. All right, next question. Which of the following jobs okay, may be become popular? Which job will become popular in the next 20 years? Three seconds, two seconds, one second, done. Okay, 51 got it right. Yes. Okay, next. <laughs> Ash gave giving up 1837 points. Yes, I Not a global trend today. Which is not a global trend today. Five seconds. Four seconds, two seconds, one second. So you have to respond within ten seconds. So ten got it right. Next. Okay, Bilal has taken over. Okay, so two thousand seven hundred. Next. Question number four. Quickly, you have to answer quickly. What is the best definition for digital twin? Four seconds, three seconds, one second. <laughs> Correct answer okay, is uh, digital representation. Right? Okay, next. So, so let me say it's leading now. Okay, next question. This is the last question. Which is not a, not a hot topic. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, next. Okay, let's see the winner. Okay, four thousand points. So we see by two thousand. So we can have a Ranveer Singh. Oh. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. The all three coming, all three come up. Antosh and. Take a photo. Yeah. Okay, so congrats. Okay. So congrats. Okay, congrats. Okay, now can I Okay, so thank you very much, everyone. And I hope uh, you enjoy. Okay. And I think as I, the key thing is that they try to get into this new technology. Okay, it will benefit a lot. With that, thank you very much. My email address is uh, available. You can communicate with me if you have any questions. Okay, thank you and bye.